In the early Pokemon games, the Game Corner was a staple of the series, but due to conflicting gambling rules in various countries, they often had to make completely different games for releases in areas with stricter rules. They ended up removing the Game Corner in later games completely because of this. The last of these Game Quarter iterations, though, was in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. In the Korean and Western release only, instead of the usual slot machine or roulette, they made a game of their own, Voltorb Flip. Voltorb Flip is a combination of two pre-existing games, Minesweeper and Picross. Minesweeper has you figuring out which spaces have mines and avoiding them, while Picross has numbers at the edge of lines and columns to hint at which squares need to be filled in. Voltorb Flip includes both of these features combined into a game of logic and chance. I'm going to go over the basics of the game, an easy, less intensive strategy, and then a more advanced strategy, so view whichever section you need. Voltorb Flip contains a 5x5 grid, with two numbers on the end of each row and column. The top number tells you the amount of points in that section, and the bottom number is the amount of Voltorbs, which count as zero points. Each square either contains a Voltorb, a 1, a 2, or a 3. Your goal in the game is to flip over all of the 2s and 3s without flipping over any Voltorbs. When you flip over a 2 or 3, it'll multiply your current coin count in the round by that number. Thus, if you multiply by a Voltorb, a 0, it'll go to 0. And anything times 0 is still 0, so you lose. Likewise, multiplying by 1 just gives you the same number, so 1s can be ignored completely. There are 8 levels of Voltorb Flip, each with a generally harder layout, more Voltorbs, and a higher payout. In level 1, there's 6 Voltorbs on the boards, increasing to 10 by level 5. In every level after 5, there will always be 10 Voltorbs, but the layouts will always be harder. In level 7 specifically, though, there's a possibility for 13 Voltorbs. When you lose, you'll either stay on the level that you're on, or be sent back. The amount of squares you flipped determines where you're sent back to. If you flipped 2, you go to level 2. 3 flip to level 3, and so on. The Voltorb that you flip to lose the game does not count towards this. Remember that, even though this is a logic game, no matter how good you are, there will be some luck involved. Earlier levels can be completed with logic alone, but it becomes less likely the harder your level is. With that out of the way, let's go over a basic strategy. For these strategies, I'm going to be pulling from the rules method on dragonflycave.com. They've come up with a great and in-depth system that's easy to explain. For the basic method, we're going to start with rule 1. Flip over sections with no Voltorb. Pretty simple, they're guaranteed safe, so there's no reason not to flip them over. Rule number 2. Mark rows with only Voltorb. You're incredibly lucky if you have this, it gives you a ton of information. Rule number 3. Mark rows where the point total and the Voltorb count equal 5. This tells us that every single square will either be a Voltorb or a 1, neither of which we have to flip. In the simple method, I just mark all of these with a Voltorb mark so things look clean. And from here, we're going to skip some of the steps that take considerably more effort and go straight to rule number 8, figuring out what remains from what we've already flipped. For example, if we flipped over a 2 in a row with 0 Voltorbs, does that give us anything on the opposite row? Maybe everything else has to either be a 1 or a Voltorb because that's the only thing that's possible. That means we've eliminated yet another row. After doing these steps in the easier levels, this should mean you have a relatively small number of squares unmarked. Now, we're just going to start guessing. Start with rows that have the lowest amount of Voltorbs and the highest amount of points, and work your way from there. Just don't forget to eliminate any impossibilities if you do end up flipping over a 2 or a 3. For the advanced method, we're going to be using all of the rules without skipping any of them. Again, we're pulling from dragonflycave.com's methods. Rule number one, flip over all the rows with zero Voltorbs. Rule number two, mark all rows with five Voltorbs with the Voltorb mark. Rule three, mark all rows where the point value and Voltorb count add up to five. We're going to mark these with both the Voltorb mark and the one mark, since these are the only two possibilities. Rule number four, if a row has 4 Voltorb, mark all the squares as Voltorb and the number in the point box, as any other number is impossible. Rule number 5. If a row's point value and Voltorb count add up to 6, you can eliminate 3 as a possibility in that row. Mark all spaces as Voltorb, 1, and 2. Rule number 6. Figure out if 1s aren't possible in the row. You can figure this out with some counting, but to lay it out plainly, this happens if there are 3 Voltorbs and at least 5 points, 2 Voltorbs and at least 8 points, or 1 Voltorb and at least 11 points. You can mark these as Voltorb, 2, and 3. 
So after all of these rules, you may have a row or a column that conflicts with each other, which brings us to rule number seven, eliminating the impossible. Let's say you have a row where the only possible squares are Voltorb or a one, but you have a column where ones aren't possible. This means at the cross section of this column and row, there's a guaranteed Voltorb because that's the only thing that they have in common. This then brings us to rule number eight, what remains. How did that Voltorb impact the rest of the row? If there's only one Voltorb in the row, you can go ahead and flip the rest over since they're guaranteed safe. You might need to go back over some of the previous rules to determine the rest of the row. And eventually, after all of this, you'll probably need to make a guess. Same with the simple method, I recommend that you start with squares and rows with low Voltorb counts and high point counts. Guessing on the safer squares will help you out with having more flipped so you don't get sent back as far if you lose. Alright, here I have a level 4 map that we're going to work out with the advanced method. To start, there is one row for rule 1 with 0 Voltorbs. Now rows with 5 Voltorbs, there's none of those, you're not going to see that until the higher levels. Rule 3, any point values that add up to 5. We've got 2 rows that do, and 1 column. After that, a rule with 4 Voltorb. Aha! Here you can see the first advantage to using the advanced method. We have a column that can only be either Voltorbs or 3s. But you'll notice that there's two spots that can only be Voltorb and 1 already. That means those are two guaranteed Voltorbs. Rule 5, any point values in Voltorbs that add up to 6 can be marked as 0, 1, or 2. We've got one at the top here, and look at that, already another one that makes a guaranteed Voltorb because that can't be a 3 either. And one at the end. We don't add a 2 here because Voltorb and 1 are still the only things that are possible. And that's the only row that adds to 6. Rule 6, find any rows where 1 is not possible. Looking at all of these, we have 1 that applies to this rule. 2 Voltorbs and at least 8 points. This means that these can be anything but 1s. And look at that, that means there's another guaranteed Voltorb here because 1 is the only possible thing for the column. We've gotten rid of quite a bit here, now we need to see if there's anything else that we can get rid of. Now, hold on, we have a guaranteed Voltorb for this top row. That means the rest is guaranteed to be safe. And sure enough, there's that two that we were looking for on the left side. So did this change anything? Well, yes, and oddly enough, it's in a column that we have a one in. With the three Voltorbs, there's only two possibilities of number combinations that can add up to four. Two twos, or a one and a three. Now we know that two is just simply not a possibility at all, which gives us two more guaranteed Voltorbs. And hey, that's two more guaranteed free spots over here for this row. Now, I'm gonna be honest, using this method is going to take a lot of re-looking over your work, and looking at this bottom row here, there's no possibilities for any more twos. The other two numbers in this row have to be two threes, so we can go ahead and get rid of that two as well. And looking at this row as well, there's no possibilities for two here either. So this has either got to be Voltorb 1 or 3. And after all this, I guess I could be making a mistake, but I don't think there's anything else we can do to narrow this down, so I'm going to pick the space that I think is the safest, the very bottom left. And no. Unfortunately, that's how it goes down. We were able to narrow down so much, and it was still a failure. Generally for me myself, I'll use the basic method for levels 1 through 4 and then the advanced method for levels 5 through 8. It just saves time that way, and using the advanced method can take a lot of focus and thinking. But there is a simpler way. Cheating. If you really just want those juicy prizes and don't really care about the game, there's a site just for you. Voltorbflip.com. All you have to do is insert the numbers you have on the sides, and it'll go square by square telling you which one to flip next, and even gives you the probability that the square you're about to flip is a Voltorb. It's not morally correct, but it gets the job done. Hope this helped. If you want to see more stuff about Pokemon Heart Gold or Soul Silver, I have an entire playthrough on my channel, so check that out if you want. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time.